Thank you for viewing Module 6 of our Policy Surveillance Training video series. In this video, you will learn about quality control as it applies to coding the law. By the end of this video, you should learn how to perform quality control on original coding, to define redundant coding, to define statistical quality control, and finally, you should learn how to do a final quality control check. Original coding consists of a researcher initially coding a jurisdiction for a project, before it is redundantly coded. For more information on coding specifically, please visit Module 5, Coding the Law. As researchers are coding their original records, the supervisor should check them for unanswered questions, review citation notes for potential issues in the project, ensure that citations are corresponding to the responses, and ensure that the legal text is formatted correctly based on the standards that have been selected for publication. Redundant coding consists of two researchers independently coding identical records from the same jurisdiction. As the researchers perform redundant research to ensure all the citations within the jurisdiction are included, they will also redundantly code those same jurisdictions to ensure all questions have been answered correctly. Redundant coding identifies problems with the questions, problems with the response set, and coding errors. These are the steps you will follow when performing redundant coding. The following slides will detail these four steps. The first step in redundant coding consists of assigning redundant coding to the project's researchers. 100% of jurisdictions should be redundantly coded until the rate of divergence between researchers goes below 5%. Then, the researcher can reduce the rate of redundant coding to 20% of jurisdictions. For example, if there are 50 jurisdictions being studied in a cross-sectional project, with batches of 10 jurisdictions at a time being assigned, the first 10 jurisdictions should all have redundant coding. If the rate of divergence for that batch is below 5%, then only two of the following 10 jurisdictions should have redundant coding. For a longitudinal project, Redundant research is performed on a set percentage of total iterations for that batch. So, when the rate of divergence is above 5% and a batch of 10 jurisdictions has an average of 5 iterations per jurisdiction, then all 50 iterations must be redundantly coded. However, if the rate of divergence goes under 5%, then 10 iterations must be redundantly coded. The second step in redundant coding consists of both researchers coding their records. As researchers code the same jurisdiction, they will overlap on some responses, but will diverge on other responses. The objective is to identify which responses were divergent and to resolve those divergences. Once both researchers have coded their records, the supervisor should compare their responses to determine which responses were divergent. The supervisor can then calculate the rate of divergence between researchers to determine at what rate future records should be redundantly coded. For more information on calculating the rate of divergence, please see our supporting document, Calculating the Rate of Divergence. In addition, supervisors should record those divergences on a coding review sheet, which is a document allowing researchers to explain their coding decisions in the case of a divergence. For an example and template of a coding review sheet, please visit the related resources under Module 6, Quality Control. To calculate the rate of divergence, the supervisor divides the total number of divergences in each batch of coding by the total number of coded variables. This can be done using formulas in Microsoft Excel. Once the divergence rates have been calculated, the supervisor should review the redundant coding using a coding review sheet. The supervisor should record every divergence, error, and outstanding caution note in the coding review sheet. Once complete, the coding review sheet is sent to the researchers so that they can address these issues. Once the overall rate of divergence has been calculated, the next step is to classify the errors in the data. Generally, divergences will fall into one of two categories, objective errors or interpretive errors. Objective errors are instances where the original coder or the naive coder answered the question incorrectly. This could be because the coder forgot to answer a question, because of a typo, or because the coder misread a law. Interpretive errors are errors where coders reasonably came to different conclusions based on a different interpretation of the law. This could happen if two coders defined a key term differently or if the coding scheme is not yet well defined. When there are objective errors in a project, 
those errors should be recoded. If a researcher is frequently making objective errors, additional training may be necessary. When there are interpretive errors in a project, there are several potential resolutions. Questions can be modified when an unclear question is frequently causing interpretive errors. Additional laws can be collected if they clarify an issue that is causing a divergence. And finally, additional responses can be added to avoid similar issues. When a decision has been made about how to interpret a question or responses, it should be recorded in the research protocol document. For more information on the research protocol, please see Module 7, Publication and Dissemination. Once researchers have explained their issues in the coding review sheet, the research team should meet in person or remotely to discuss any outstanding issues. If a decision was made during original coding that affects previous jurisdictions, researchers have to recode those jurisdictions. Conducting quality control on a rolling basis as research is being performed, in batches of 10 jurisdictions at a time, for example, allows early issues to be rectified before the entirety of a project's research is complete. This also serves to educate the researchers on the complexities of the project so that later research is facilitated. Initially, there should be a great deal of discussion in quality control, and as divergences are addressed, it should become faster and more efficient. Statistical quality control aims to provide a reliability rate for the overall dataset. By testing a new round of coding against the final coding of the dataset, a reliability rate for the entire dataset can be established. Datasets should aim to guarantee with 95% confidence that the overall error rate is 5% or below. Should the reliability rate be over 95%, the dataset can be published with confidence. A reliability rate of under 95% may necessitate additional statistical quality control to improve the accuracy of the dataset. In order to conduct statistical quality control, a statistician can use statistical software such as Excel or SATA to create a random sample of coding instances, or individual responses, for 5 to 10% of the coding instances in the dataset. The number of coding instances in a dataset can be identified by multiplying the total number of possible responses by the number of records in that dataset. For example, a dataset with 100 records and 20 potential responses overall has 2,000 coding instances in total, 100 times 20. The statistician can use formulas to weigh certain variables more heavily in the sample based on feedback from the project supervisor. The project supervisor should then distribute the random sample to the project's researchers to be redundantly coded and then compared to the original coding of the dataset. A smaller sample from the project can be selected in instances where resources are not available to redundantly code 10% of the entire dataset. However, a larger sample size is preferable if resources allow for it. When creating the sample, the statistician should meet with the project supervisor to discuss whether weighing variables makes sense for that particular dataset. For example, if the supervisor found that certain variables were leading to high divergence rates throughout the redundant coding, she may decide to weigh those variables more heavily in SQC. If so, the project supervisor should indicate which variables are high risk and discuss how heavily each variable should be weighed in the sample. Weighing the sample can ensure that tricky questions are coded accurately before a dataset is published. Once the researchers have redundantly coded the sample, the divergence rate should be calculated using the same methods as for redundant coding. The sample should be overlaid with the original data in Excel, and formulas should be used to determine the divergence rate. When the divergence rate is over 5%, the dataset should be adjusted to ensure that the divergence rate goes down. For example, if certain questions are leading to a higher divergence rate, protocol notes, adjustments to the question, and adjustments to the responses can be helpful in reducing the divergence rate. SQC should be repeated until a divergence rate of 5% or below can be established. At the end of a data set, the supervisor should remove any redundant coding records for publishing. The supervisor should also do a final pass of all the project data to identify any outstanding issues, including any questions that were not answered, outlier responses, missing citations, or inconsistent caution notes. Here you will find a summary of what we have covered on quality control for coding. To learn more about conducting policy surveillance, 
please visit the Learning Library at lawatlas.org to access additional modules and resources, including Module 7, Publication and Dissemination. Thank you for watching.